everyone. Today's video is going to be an art supplies haul. I actually haven't had a chance to do one of these yet on my channel, and that's mainly because I don't really buy art supplies in mass amounts anymore. I kind of just pick up the things that I need as they run out, and that doesn't really make a very interesting video. <laughs> But in the new year, I decided to pick up some new supplies that I wanted to try out, and I figured it might be interesting to show you what I'll be using in future videos and things I'm trying out. So let's get straight into the art supplies. The first thing I guess we'll start with is something I have already used, and it's this watercolor sketchbook. Um, you've seen it in videos. The Metallic Mountains painting was done in this. Um, there's some other... Just random paintings you haven't seen yet. I've been posting them on Instagram as I've been doing them. Um, but I decided to buy this specific watercolor sketchbook because I was kind of in a bit of an art rut at the beginning of the year and I thought maybe I should pick up a sketchbook and set it as a challenge to try and fill it up by a certain date. I don't think that's going to happen now because it seemed to have worked with the art block rut kind of thing and uh, the date is looming, <laughs> and I have a lot of other projects planned, but I do want to fill this up hopefully fairly soon, and when I do, you will most likely see a watercolor sketchbook tour. It is a Strathmore watercolor sketchbook. I believe it's eight and a half by five and a half inches. If not, all of the um, specific information for each product that I mention will be in the description box if you're interested in something that I show. Um, but yes, it is cold pressed watercolor paper, 300 GSM like most watercolor paper is, and so far it's been really nice. I mean, as you can see, the pages aren't actually warping as badly. I mean, there's a bit of warping, but considering that I haven't really been taping the edges down like I normally do for all of my watercolor paintings, I think that the pages are holding up really well. So, so far, so good for this watercolor sketchbook. The next thing which isn't really exciting are these Moo Professional Erasers. I have used these before, this is a repurchase, and these are by far the best erasers I have ever used. I actually thought I lost mine, so I had to buy more of them, and I have to order these online, and they don't come very fast, so it's like, woo, panic mode, and had to order these. I ended up finding the one that I was using randomly after I had gotten these in the mail and of course I didn't want to open these ones because I wanted to make this video but these are great they make I'm sure you can see in the little box thing other than them just being able to erase fantastically the other great draw to these is that they make these big chunks as opposed to these little pieces so they make far less of a mess, which is great because for sketching paintings and stuff, I like move around my studio and sometimes I sketch on my couch and you don't want a whole bunch of little eraser pieces all over your couch. So these are great other than they work fantastic and I highly recommend these. They also aren't that expensive, even though they're professional erasers and they're kind of strange. They're still pretty inexpensive. I guess the next kind of category that we'll go into is I had a bit of a calligraphy kick a few weeks ago so I bought a bunch of different pens and inks and stuff to try out and the first thing that I bought was this Pilot Metropolitan Fountain Pen in black. Now this one I purchased because it comes with an ink converter which if you don't know fountain pens normally have to use ink cartridges this also comes with an ink cartridge you can see it there in the case um, but this one actually came with its own ink converter instead of having to find one that fits another fountain pen and so that was the main draw to this and if you don't know an ink converter you can use your own ink and normally I use fountain pens and dip pens to ink watercolor paintings and most fountain ink isn't waterproof so there's a bit of an issue there so this one because it came with an ink converter I can use my own waterproof ink of whatever kind that I wanted to use and so yeah that was the reason it also has this really nice fine nib so it's great for precise detail work 
I haven't really tried this out yet, I've kind of just scribbled on a scrap piece of paper to see if I could get the ink flowing, because the ink converter's in it right now. But yeah, so far so good. It's nice and heavy, so it feels great to use, and it comes with this awesome case. The next thing to go with that is this Noodler's waterproof... Yeah, this Noodler's Black Waterproof Fountain Ink. It's sometimes called Bulletproof too, um, but it's just this big bottle of black waterproof ink. And like I was saying, I bought this mainly to use with that fountain pen. Um, so I haven't tried this out yet, so I don't know how waterproof this is yet, but it had good reviews, so I'm hopeful. <laughs> I guess also on the ink train of thought, I picked up some more colors of the FW Acrylic Ink by De La Rowney. Um, this one is fluorescent red, and then this is fluorescent pink. This is Process Magenta and Fluorescent Blue. I have a bunch of these already. It's the black acrylic ink I use all the time in videos. I have it in a bunch of different colors, but I didn't have these colors. And, you know, it's pretty standard acrylic ink. You know, it comes with a dropper. And yeah, it's really nice and pigmented. And I'd been looking at possibly buying the fluorescent set. But it's really hard to find and like non-existent to find, so I figured that I would just pick up the fluorescent colors that I was most interested in, which were these three, and give them a try. The next thing, still on the calligraphy train of thought, are these Pilot... what are these called? Pilot Parallel Pens. This is the set of all four sizes. I was looking at these because I saw someone on Instagram use them. Um, they're very unique pens. They are the straight... here, I'll pick up a bigger size so you can see this. These are four different sizes, but they have these... they work... they're like straight-edged, but they work off of a two-plate system, and I saw someone on Instagram use these, and they said they had modified it, and what I think they did is they split the plates, and they could draw and it would like splatter ink and it looked really cool and I'm sure if you've watched my videos before you know splatter is in my aesthetic. <laughs> so I figured these would be really cool to try. I was originally going to just try one or two of them but I found this set on Amazon and buying the four of them together was a really good deal as opposed to buying them individually. So, I have the 1.5mm, the 2.4mm, the 3.8mm, and the 6mm. And that is the widths of the plates. So as you can see, the 1.5mm has a smaller tip, and they gradually go bigger. They also come with ink cartridges. I don't know if I'm going to actually put the ink cartridges in them, or if I'm going to dip them. I haven't figured that out yet, but... If I do want to use the ink cartridges, they come with a black and a red, which is really cool. Sticking with the pen theme, I picked up two glass dip pens. I'm not sure if these really have a specific brand. I kind of just looked on Amazon and picked out two that looked good, had good reviews, looked interesting. Um, but yeah, they look really cool. <laughs> As you can see, I mean, most people would not necessarily think that this was a pen. <laughs> but yeah, it's a glass dip pen, so it works like a normal dip pen. It's just made out of glass, so it's really easy to clean and looks really cool. This one, as you can see, is blue. They come in a bunch of cool, crazy colors. Um, but this one has a more unusual end. It's kind of longer and thinner. I'm sure you'll see the difference with the other one. This one, it's more bulb-like. Here's the other one. See, it's more round and the tip looks a bit thinner than the other one. So, I'll show you them side by side. So, as you can see, a bit of a different shape, but I've always wanted to try these, so I figured, you know, they're not that expensive, so I figured I'd pick a couple up to try them out and see how it goes. 
The next two things are kind of in the same vein. It is Pouring Medium from Liquitex and Paint Easy. These are both for pour painting. If you've seen a couple videos ago, I did um, a watercolor painting that had a pour painting element in it, but it's something I've always wanted to try out and I wanted to be experiment a bit, and these are two things that you need for pour painting. Um, basically, they thin out the acrylic paint without the paint losing its opacity. So Paint Easy is a latex paint conditioner. Some people use Floatrol, um, but this is what I could get my hands on in Canada. And the pouring medium, as it says, it basically thins out the paint so you can pour it. The next thing, also not that exciting, but it's high gloss varnish from Liquitex. Again, it's to finish off some paintings. I made my mom a pour painting to go in her sewing room that matched the colors and I wanted to protect it. And so I picked up this high gloss varnish because somehow I don't have any. So it worked really good. And yeah, that's so far so good with this stuff. Also in the same vein of protecting artwork, I decided to pick up some art resin. It's epoxy resin, so you have the hardener and the resin itself. Mix them together in equal parts and it hardens. Not that exciting, but an essential to kind of have around your studio for sealing different types of artwork. And the last things are some art books. I saw an artist I follow on Instagram talk about this one, and like I said before, I was kind of in an art rut at the beginning of the year, and the person said this was a really interesting book, and so I decided to try and seek it out, and I found out that the artist that wrote this one also wrote three other ones, so I decided to buy them all. But they all had really good reviews, and the art will artwork looks beautiful in them, and so I decided to pick them all up, like I said. It's there by Jean Haynes, and the first one is called Paint Yourself Calm. Then we have Color and Light in Watercolor. Then the World of Watercolor and Atmospheric Watercolor. Can you sense a theme? <laughs> Like I said, they had really good reviews, and I can always use more art books. And that's everything. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit different. Uh, I know this wasn't the most interesting art supplies haul in the world, but they were the products I needed. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.